Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, I am going to show you how to perform a head to toe assessment for a NICU patient. If you're new here, my name is Anna and I'm a critical care registered nurse. I've worked with a lot of different patient populations during my time as a nurse, but by far my favorite population to work with are the preemies in the NICU. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a routine head to toe assessment on a neonatal patient so that you're able to efficiently cluster all of your cares together and minimize the amount of hands-on time you actually have with your patient, which is important the younger your patient is in terms of their gestational age. Before you even open up the isolate doors and go to assess your patient, there is quite a bit of information we can actually obtain through looking at your patient's vital signs and also through your visual assessment. Before you even open up the cover of your isolate, go ahead and glance up at the monitor to see what their resting vital signs are. You're looking at things like their heart rate, their respiratory rate, what is their SpO2 level, and if they have an arterial line, what is their art line reading. Next, I typically will go to the isolate and pull up the isolate cover and do a quick visual assessment. In neonates and really all kids, a visual assessment is a huge piece of your physical assessment. We want to see what these kids look like at rest before a stranger comes in and bugs them. For the neonates, the things that I'm assessing in my visual assessment are my patient's color, their work of breathing, I'm seeing if they're having any accessory muscle use, I'm looking at their respiratory rate and seeing if that is consistent with what the monitor is saying. I'll also look at their muscle tone and their facial expressions, and this will help me to formulate a pain score. The very last thing that I'll do before I open up the doors and get hands on with my patient is to write down all of the temperature numbers that the isolate is displaying. We want to know what the environment of the isolate is before any hot air escapes or any cold air enters. Typically, this will be the bed set temperature that I'll write down, what the um, patient's temp probe is reading, and also what the air temp is in the isolate, as well as the humidity if the isolate is humidified. After we've done those three things, our resting vital signs, a quick visual assessment, and recording our temperature numbers, we are ready to perform our hands-on physical assessment. The very first thing I'll do is either obtain an axillary temperature or obtain a blood pressure. And this is really up to your nursing judgment. If you have a teensy weensy preemie who will lose heat quickly just within moments of that isolate door opening, it would be best to obtain a temperature first. Likewise, if you have a patient who gets irritated or agitated really easily, you may wanna get your blood pressure first. This again, will be dependent on your nursing judgment for the situation. While my blood pressure is reading, I will go ahead and place an enteral syringe on the end of my gastric tube that has a mill of air in it, and this will be one of the ways that I verify placement later. After I've obtained my blood pressure, I will begin auscultating, and I usually work head to toe. I think that's the easiest way for me to remember everything and not skip any areas. So I typically start with the lungs. I'm making sure that the patient sounds equal and clear bilaterally. I'll then move to the heart where I will assess the patient's rhythm if it's regularly regular or if there are any murmurs present. I will then move down to the abdomen to listen. And in neonates, they are so tiny and there's so much hyper resonance, you really need to make sure that you are listening low in the abdomen to hear true bowel sounds and not gastric sounds, which are heard more over the stomach. So I'm listening very low in the abdomen for these gastric sounds, and then I'll come back to the stomach and listen for my air bolus as one of the ways I'm verifying placement. I also typically aspirate a tiny amount of stomach contents just to make sure that I am seeing true gastric contents, and I also always get a visual on the number that the tube was inserted to to make sure that it hasn't moved. Now that we're finished auscultating, we are going to work again in a head to toe fashion with the rest of our assessment components. Starting at the head, I feel my patient's fontanelles, their anterior and their posterior. I'm feeling and making sure that they are open, soft, and flat. I am also feeling their suture lines to see if they are separated, approximated, or a little bit overriding. Next, I'll move on to the pupils to see that they're equal and reactive, and then I will assess my patient's reflexes. 
You can see me assessing the Moro reflex here. We also have the Palma reflex, the Babinski reflex. If we had a pacifier, we could see if our patient was sucking. Also, sometimes in your visual assessment, you'll see your patient sucking on their ET tubes if they're intubated. And of course, if your patient is a little bit older, we would also be assessing for the rooting reflex. After assessing their reflexes, I'll typically move into assessing their mucous membranes to make sure that they are pink and moist, and then I'll go right into checking their pulses. The pulses I'm checking here are the brachial and femoral pulse. To finish up our head to toe assessment, I am going to go ahead and check my patient's cap refill. I'll do a trunk or a central cap refill. I'll also check it on an upper and a lower extremity. I will finally palpate my patient's abdomen and assess their skin turgor. At this point too, if your patient had a PIC line or a PIV, any other sort of wounds, dressings, things of that nature, you would want to go ahead and assess all of those things as well. At this point, you are finally ready to change your patient's diaper. You will obtain an abdominal girth at this time if it's indicated, and as you're changing the diaper, you are assessing the genitalia and the skin in that area. At this point, we will also apply diaper cream because it is so much easier to prevent a diaper rash than trying to get a diaper rash to heal. Finally, we are ready to switch all of our patient's bands to a different extremity. It is incredibly easy for these little guys to get pressure injuries, so it's important to be constantly moving around things like blood pressure cuffs, pulse oxes, ID bands, tot guards, things of that nature. We are now finished with our head to toe assessment, but your hands off time isn't quite finished yet with your patient. It is really important that you leave your patient in a developmentally appropriate position. Your hospital likely has a variety of positioning aids to use to get these little guys settled, but it is incredibly important that when you're finished with your assessment, you do not leave them all sprawled out. It's also important to remember to phone a friend if your patient is intubated and you're needing to reposition them when you're finished with your assessment. I hope this video was helpful, and remember that even though the neonatal assessment has been standardized, there are still many, many different ways that you can obtain this assessment data from your patient. So if you found a way that has worked better for you and you think is more efficient, please let me know. These are just some of the ways that my brain works and that I think through all of the information I need to assess. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.